Today is Thursday, February the 22nd, 2024, and welcome to episode 84 of Rural Reliance with Candy Couple and Julia. I'm Erin. We're a small homestead family in rural southwest Virginia that work every single day on being more self-reliant, less dependent on outside sources, merging, homesteading, and frugality. And today we want to talk about a topic that's really close to us. You've heard us talk about this before, but... We really look to the old ways. We do. And we feel it's so important to remember. We want to actually go over why we feel it's so important in the ways we incorporate this into our homestead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we are old souls, if you all haven't noticed. <laughs> early to rise, early to bed, just old, old souls. I have always gotten along better with older uh, much older people than myself. I was a college kid sitting with an 80 year old lady, my neighbor, and that was my Wednesday night, Sunday night, Saturday night, whatever. And uh, that's just always been my thing. I would have rather have sat and listened to my papa tell stories and just about anything most of the time. Yeah. You say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, it's, you know. It's how I grew up. Uh, honestly, you know, I didn't grow up around a lot of other smaller kids. I grew up around, you know, all the great aunts and stuff up here in my area. And they were always, you know, talking about, you know, how they made it through the Great Depression, how, uh, you know, times were around World War II, etc. So it was a lot of uh, things you learned and got to hear. Yes. So, our older generation in our area has embraced the modern, a lot of modern well, things. Well, uh, the now older generation. They, the now older generation. Yes. Most of the ones we were talking about before. They're, they've passed on. They've passed on. They've passed on. They're, they're in their 90s and around here, 90, you're you, lucky. You, you don't see many, <laughs> many gardening per se. Um, but... Um, this is basically the kids of of theirs, for example. You know, with them became modern luxuries more, you know. More of a focus on convenience. Yes. And you've kind of lost that sense in this area because it, it was a way of life. Like, it was standard. Everybody had a garden. And if you think about the Great Depression, it's how a lot of folks survived. Mm-hmm. If they hadn't had their garden, hadn't known how to put away food. I mean, and I'm not saying things were hard. Things were hard for everyone. Yeah. Everyone. But homesteads, we don't really consider them homesteads, but that's what they were. They were homesteads. That's what they were. Were built to be self-sufficient. For the most part, there were a few things they needed. They would have to have flour and things like that. But if you couldn't get your flour, you couldn't afford it. You probably had a can of mayors. Or... Beans. Or, or they were bartering. Or they were bartering. For the people who had it for stuff that they had. So you had more of a system of self-reliance. And you saw the death of that in later years. Like, it was like, I don't want to do that. That's too hard. I would say 60s and 70s. That really... I'd say 50s. You think 50s? I think 50s. I, I was going to say 60s and 70s. It went more by the wayside. I think 50s. You had your modern day housewife. She wanted those luxuries. And that's when you start seeing these processed foods coming into play more and more. We love Food the Built in America. That, that is a great it really is. series. And you really see the death of the homestead from way back when. From our great grandparents. Our great great grandparents. You see the death of that lifestyle. Because we go for conveniences. We go for more conveniences and clothing. Everything. We lean towards that convenience item. And we are guilty of this too. Grabbing that box of mac and cheese to have on the pantry whenever you're busy or whatever it is. I'm so guilty of this. I have an emergency pizza in my freezer. <laughs> I will always have an emergency pizza in my freezer. I hope to never need it. I'm hoping to get to that point where I don't have to rely on that emergency pizza. But that's just where I am at this stage in our life. Now we're getting better. We're doing better. We're making progress. But I'm nowhere near where I want to be. 
And I feel like we have just have such a reliance now on modern conveniences to where we've forgotten what it was like back then. It's true. It's hard to believe. Like, we are talking, you know, 2024, 100 years ago, let's say, you know, how much has changed? In it's years. crazy. If you think about it, it's absolutely crazy. Now, if you went back 100 years, you know, before that, you might not see as much change. No, you would see some, but You'd not nearly some, as but much. Not as much. But, I mean, we talk about this all the time, how much change we've seen just in our little bit of time. So, mm -hmm. I can't even imagine someone who's in their 90s looking back and being like, I, I mean, it would be mind-boggling yeah. how yeah. much they have seen and how much they've changed. So, for us embracing and learning the old ways and how people did things is so important from how they made their bread to how they preserved their food. All of these things are so important. I mean, they did it for hundreds of years. Their grandparents taught them how to do mm -hmm. it. It's just sort of how it was always done. And then you have modern society say, no, you can't do that. It's not safe to do this. And it's like, well, Mamma did it. <laughs> Why can't I do it? Because we're telling you, you can't do it. Like, like here's a good one I've seen this week on social media. Just people talking about how they used to take a uh, one of the metal wash tubs, you know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about, put it over the fire to water bath can green beans. Yep. <laughs> not not supposed to do that. Not supposed to do that, but <laughs> they did it back a lot in the of day. People did. They did it back in the day. Like we know that our mm -hmm. I know I know it was done. Like yep. pressure cookers haven't been around that long. You know it was done. Um, I remember my papa talking about it. And your your grandma, she would use jar lids twice. Mm -hmm. She'd use the flats twice. So <laughs> yet your dad talks about yep. that all the yep. time. Hey, you know, just stuff like that that are no nos now, you know? Yeah. It's considered <laughs> rub all canning. Yes. <laughs> and so just the thought. We really embrace this. We love to talk about how people did it way back in. We always go to the reenactments of the old ways and mm -hmm. everything. But, Aaron, this is really something for our homestead, especially with his his primary roles on our homestead, he really tries to look at and embrace. He really does. Mm -hmm. So what do we do to ensure these skills aren't lost? So the first thing I would say we do is we really try to build our homestead library with books that are old <laughs> or that Talk. are focused about right. older skills right. that look back at how did they do it way back when. Yeah, and a good example, we were yard selling here I guess about, two couple, months, about two months ago. About yeah. two months ago. And we were like, oh, okay, here's two books that either they're really good resale value or they're amazing for the Homestead Library. And... It was talking about agriculture in the 50s and 60s was one of them. And the other one was seed seed varieties or yep. something from the U.S. Department of Agriculture back in the, in the uh, early uh, 50s or so. You know, just and it had a lot of things, you know, how, how it was told to do stuff back then and stuff that's, you know, great to have on hand. Maybe a lot of stuff isn't true anymore. But, but it's, it's a good knowledge exactly. resource. Exactly. And then you have books that look at, you know, like Country Living. <coughs> Foxfire. All of these books, I mean, that we look for and we're always trying to catch good deals on or try to find to help build that homestead, you know, library resource. So we have them on hand because we want these in paper form. We do not want these in electronic form at all. Right. Um, you know, if it was something in electronic form, we would make sure to have a physical copy would somehow. be printing mm -hmm. <laughs> and that could be a bit of a pain so um where do we find them so we'll like Aaron said we look at yard sales any place like that when we go thrifting we check there now I will say in our area we don't see a lot of that no it, it's hard to find most people are gonna keep those books if they have them yeah it's hard to find that type of stuff um you know used bookstores is a is another good place to look at. But the thing is, you know, a lot of those are going to be like 
these things ain't gonna sell. They're gonna put them in like the, you know the yeah the, the stack uh... where you can get like fifty <laughs> bucks fifty bucks for a dollar or something, you know, or a bag for five bucks. <laughs> like the we were we went to one and the gardening section was seriously like how to make your flowers look prettier and all of this. It was two shelves. And I was like, no, there's nothing here for us. Right. This is not what we're looking for because I can tell. By a glance, Aaron wants to look at every single book title to make sure. Now, we have found a lot at Ollie's. We have. Ollie's we have. has been a great resource for us for books. A lot of how to take produce from, you know, straight out of the garden to the kitchen to give ideas and inspiration, um, growing in different areas and mm -hmm. seasons, um, encyclopedias on vegetables and things like that, what they yeah. need. Those, those have been really good ones. They've been really good. Where else would you say we find? I would say Amazon for the newer books. We have, what we do is we actually created a list just for books that we are interested in. This has saved us so much. So when we know a book sale is going on, mm -hmm. Aaron goes and looks, see if any books are on sale. If they're not, not interested, but if they are. Right, yeah, yeah. No, we're not the top to use or pay 20 bucks for a book unless it's like an absolute necessity yep yep i like birthdays and that's how aaron's got a lot of books he's got them for me for my birthday or for christmas <laughs> he's that's like true. we'll get i can get two books and get a free one for three for free so i get a lot of um homestead books mm. on on the holidays herbal teas remedies stuff like that yep so it's worked out really well for us like I said, what we look for is we look for really homestead basics. I don't need anything. I don't look for anything that's like well, really narrow. A good one we got, I think we got, I got it at Ollie's too, was a knot book. Yes. Yes. A tie all kind of different knots, you know? But it was very small. It's very small. Most of the time if we're looking at books, so mm -hmm. we look at something that's going to give us the most bang for our book. We look right. at the author. We look at what's the content, can we trust the content, all of these things. We, we kind of take all this into consideration. Now, if we're picking something up at Ollie's, no, we're not looking that closely at it. But if I'm picking it up on Amazon, and I'm going to pay a much oh, yeah, better price. Yeah. We're looking at all of that. Like, right. I want to make sure what we're looking at is reputable. And I feel like I have enough knowledge in different areas. I'm not an expert by any means, but I have enough knowledge I can pick out what's real and what will actually give us more value. <laughs> what's hogwash for us? Um. So we either invest or search for old tools, um, or new tools that have a similar design and purpose to, you know, the away old tools. Yes, so good example is a scythe. Yep. Um, so there's this company um, out of, was it Vermont? It's somewhere up north. Um, that, this is Aaron's toy. <laughs> this is Aaron's wheelhouse. That um, they build scythes to your height, and they have all kind of different blades that they get out of Europe, usually out of Austria and stuff, so that you can have scythes. And it's a, it's a different motion to do it it's european it's european scythe um the american scythes are usually more heavy and straighter and yes this one is it's curved. curved yep to to you know cut grass and stuff and this is how i used to cut the field um uh, for quite a while and you know it's probably something i'll get back into doing here again more uh this year hopefully is you know scything some of this area and, you know, like mini size, anything like that are great. Sickle. Sickles are great for cutting around, um, you know, certain areas as well. Uh, so you don't make sure you cut your trees or vines. Uh, your, his granny had a sickle. She used to cut the bank. Mm -hmm. Is that what you said, the bank? Uh, yes, yeah, actually, my, my mamma there, that's what she would use. She would use one of those on a bank, you know, instead of a weed eater. Weed eater or anything It was like safer that. for her. Just, just, just you know, like that. But th those things are really handy to have. And, you know, it's great to have sharpening stuff to keep them sharp. And you don't ever have to worry about maintenance on them. Nope. So, Air looks at manual. That's that. Those have been the investments we've made into our garden. They've been manual tools. And we've also looked, you know, 
Aaron was allowed to go look in a shop and we looked for old tools and that's what we pulled out. That's where we found our tater, our tater, tater dick. And we've never seen one anywhere else. And it's amazing. It's this curved pitchfork and it has been one of the best mm -hmm. tools we've gotten. Um, Maddox and all these other things. Yeah, we I also like got a, like the, a oh, screw, the hand the, drill. The hand drill. Yeah, stuff like that, you know, is great to have on, you know, the homestead. And, you know, there is just the upkeep of keeping the tools, you know, in good shape. Yep, absolutely. And for us, the things we've invested in, like last year we invested in a manual plow. A broad fork. And a broad fork. Uh, before we have invested into a wheel hoe. Which is manual. It was more for me. I'm better at managing the wheel hoe than he is. Yes. And, and this is a Haas one. So, it's a Haas. you know, it's evolved over the years compared to the, the original uh, uh, yeah. wheel hoes, for example. But uh, but they took an original idea and, and, and they really made it functional. And I have a great idea. Haas, if you're listening, <laughs> you need a rake attachment, a long rake attachment to one of these to help smooth it out. Like, I can help you design the prototype. I just want a free one. Like, I don't even want my name on it. I just, it would make my life so much easier than if I could push this rake instead of pull this rake. So, there's my two tips. Uh, <laughs> but there are so many manual tools out there that you could use. Um, we really have looked at and embraced these because we do like the no-till method. We still have to till some. Right. But we're really getting out of that. We're really... Yeah, yeah. And the broad fork was a great way that we went to that. Because he could break the soil up. That's what it is. It breaks the soil up. It goes down enough where... You're not bringing the seeds to the top, but you're still breaking it up, loosening up the soil. And you're not turning it mm -hmm. like you would with the tiller. Like, we like to till right now. I mean, we're hoping in the next couple of years we don't have to use the tiller, but we like to till right now. At the end of the season, we can cover it, and then any seeds it brings up hopefully get killed when we cover it with plastic. It's just, we, we get them, we learn how to use them, and we kind of feel like we're back in the past. I mean, it's just so important. And a lot of these old tools that we've picked up, I mean, we use. Like, Aaron has an old Matic he's picked up. We use all the time. Aaron rather use a Matic than oh, most yeah. anything else. Yeah. It's the best thing on our property. Talking to our older generations. like This one's getting harder, though, it's anymore. It's so hard. In area, it area is. Because there's not the, the gardeners, the, the ones that would preserve food as much because we've got the modern um you know the things that people want to want to do now well, people who grew up doing it don't want to do it they anymore. don't do it they don't feel like they have to we've been asked this like why do you want to go backwards is what they see it as they see That's it true. home studied as going backwards like you have all of these modernizations why do you feel the need to go backwards we don't see it as going backwards we see it as perseverance self-sufficiency i'm not relying on that grocery store exactly so we talk to that generation you know two generations behind us they see us as nuts but we were talking to somebody in the 100 120 they'd be like yeah you're crazy but we get it <laughs> yeah um we like combining old ideas and new ideas so we like taking the old way of doing things, the looking at it, examining it. And I think that's what gardening has evolved to. You look at the way they did it and how they used to do it. Now we're applying all this scientific knowledge and know-how to it to make it even better. Yeah. So you have to understand, it didn't get to where it is now. It had to come from somewhere. So knowing the bare basics, the, you know, my papa, we just threw it in the ground to grow or not grow. I mean, it was what it was versus now you have all this science that you have to think mm -hmm. about. When do I put it into the ground? What's the best date? Like, I don't remember talking about Papa talking about any well, of that. I, some people, I say a lot of I our think listeners it was go by that calendar. Go by the calendar. And I was just watching somebody on TikTok the other day saying, uh, right now is the best time to plant your taters. Um, it was last week because it was the... 
Um, well, we're talking a dark about... moon or something. What was it? Something moon, <laughs> and it comes around in March again. See, we we've never went by the calendars, but I know a lot of people swear by them. I swear, I think Peppa did. I think I well, vaguely remember. My, my grandmother did. She said, and and Aunt Opal, they would tell us all the time that okay, we have to get it out this weekend. Doesn't matter if it's raining or whatever, because the moon says right now is when we're supposed to plant this, and we're like, okay. Um, you know, but, um, you know, it's something we, we, we haven't got into because we've never had the time. It was whatever weekend we had the ability to, to plant is the weekend it got planted in the ground. <laughs> well, that, and we also look at the date we have to have it planted. Right. So what I will focus on is when's my last day and when do I need to get my beets and carrots in the ground? When do I need to have these on the calendar actually put in the ground so they have the time they need into the ground and or the cold they need, whatever it is we're mm -hmm. looking for. So that's kind of what we look at more than that. But it's evolved. It has changed. And it's just different. But knowing those old ways, they're interesting. Oh, yeah. They're very interesting to hear hear the way they used to think or the way they still think. It's just, it's just a little different. Um, I would say no-till gardening is another one. I know, like, no-till gardening way back when, that was no, not a thing. No. Like, you used the tools. You used the plows. You, you used... used seven dust. You used whatever you had. Like, yeah. that tomacious earth was not, <laughs> not, <laughs> not a thing. Not a thing. It was whatever keeps the tater bugs off your taters is what seven you use. Seven dust all the time is what you all use. All the time up here. That was it. Uh, yeah. But no-till gardening, they, like... You get looked at putting plastic on your garden before it goes down. We've gotten some looks. Yeah. Like I was told, your garden needs snow. <laughs> snow helps your garden. You'll be like, yeah, this kills weeds. I needed to kill weeds more than I need snow in the garden. Um, so we like knowing the older ways. They're great to know, and we can use those to apply to today preserving food i think this is a huge one this this goes back to you know you know canning putting up all the food dehydrating they, drying all smoking, of these different ways uh you know anything you know think about people didn't always have a refrigerator you know they might have an ice box or something but that's not something you could keep a spring house a spring house now spring house you hear from around here you hear that, that those a lot uh, like I know my um, mamma had one and it was always cold when you went in those things because, hey, that's what it was used for, you know, for stuff like that. But, um, you know, root cellars, uh, anything like that that you could put up food in to preserve it to get you through the winter, you know, is stuff that, you know, a lot of people right now, we're still, you know, hey, I'd love to have a spring house right now, you know, anything like that. Uh, to to not have to rely on you know deep freezers always yep absolutely we've talked about smokehouse of what that build looks like and things like that on our homestead and that might be a future project but it's not like in the next year or two um but we, we always we, look at these old ways to see if this is something we want to add right. to our homestead in the future like right now we don't have a source of meat so it doesn't make sense for a smokehouse and i don't know if it makes sense for chickens and and turkey and all that um, like if we had fish yeah if we had fish like a source of fresh fish that'd be a totally different or story or pig yeah but for us raising that kind of livestock doesn't make sense maybe when we have aquaponics you know maybe fish, fish. Mm -hmm. yeah um we make our items last we fix it. We patch it. I've got a whole stack of pants I have to sew up. I've, I put three in a pile this week. I'm like, I need these sewed. <laughs> so I have pockets I have to sew up because they're not worth throwing away. They're still in good condition. Yeah. You know, I don't know how many 30-some-year-olds know how to how to thread a needle. <laughs> no, I mean, any more. I mean, that's a, that's. A, did, I don't I mean, know. Did they teach that? I don't. I mean, I remember learning how to use a sewing machine in home ec, but we're way back in the sticks. Did they teach that? Yeah. Did they, places? Yeah, that's a good question. Like, you know, is is home ec still a thing? Like, is that something they taught you? Because I remember 
you know, having to learn how to sew and having to learn how to do these things. Of course, I, I did it the way I wanted to. I didn't do it the way the directions <laughs> said. But I knew how to thread a needle. I've known how to do that since I was like 10. Yeah. Um, that was easy. But yeah, definitely reuse, fix it, patch it up. And this goes back to anything mm -hmm. that you do. Yeah, not just clothes. Anything that you can working longer you know for a longer period of time even and this leads into the next one and that's creating simple processes they might not be pretty to look at but man they created efficient simple processes because they didn't have time that's true and i think we lose that trying to make things look pretty <laughs> that's very true because we've created a lot of things they've not been efficient yeah i mean it, but they've not been pretty either. But they've not been efficient. <laughs> they've not been efficient uses of our time. Mm -hmm. And I think since we've really looked at how we do things mm -hmm. on the homestead and really thought through projects, we've become more efficient and really focused on the simplicity. Like, how do we get to things? How do we make sure it's functioning? How do we ensure it doesn't fall apart? Yep. So I think these lend itself very well together. They made things simple so they'd have less to fix. Like, I could tell, you know, my papa's place, it worked. But it wasn't pretty to look at. <laughs> it wasn't pretty to look at. Um, we uh, shifted away from gas-powered we, tools. We have a lot. And the reason behind that is if... It keeps us from having to go out to get gas. It keeps us, um, you know, from going searching for parts. You know, the more manual... Learning how to use it. Right. The more manual stuff we have on hand, the more, you know, the, the, the more we're getting back to the basics. Uh, I, I will say, you know, you've heard us talk about battery-powered stuff. You know, we have went over from that a little bit. Uh, just for the ability to get some things done quicker yes. than some of the manual processes. But those, you know, hey, we're going to be charging those from the solar batteries here, uh, you know, most of the time going forward. So we're producing our own electricity for those, you know, and not having to go out to get the gas, for example. And not only that, if there's an issue with the electrical things, Aaron, I can, I, he can manage that much better than he can like a small, small engine. engine repair. That's just not my it's not knowledge. His house. Like you, you want your computer put back together or computer built? Okay, yeah, I can do that. But you want that engine uh, to the, your rototiller taken apart and put back in? I'm sorry, <laughs> we're going to get a new rototiller. <laughs> <laughs> that's it and that that's really how it goes i mean and that's that's okay we understand it we know how it works and we've learned after the last gas power thing we bought we won't be buying anything else gas powered it has to be battery powered or manual that those are the things that work best on yeah. our homestead but we tend to try to find a manual way to do it, depending on the project. If it's a project that I know is going to kill Aaron, <laughs> I'm so, so the uh, the um, uh, the ditch digger. Well, well, yes, what we were going to use that for. So we bought this ditch digger uh, and to try to build some swales easy, quicker, because the first thing was Julie was like. I'm gonna send you out there with Matic. I'm like, we're gonna. I'm gonna Matic swells. I don't think I said that. Yes, you did. And I was like, I'm gonna d dig all these by hand. I was like, I can't do this. We gotta find something. You know. I don't think I said. That. He's 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 dreaming. He's dreaming. <laughs> I didn't say that. I was the one that found the ditch digger, and it was faulty. It was, it was faulty. It wasn't a... We it, there was an actual issue. Yeah. But we were so frustrated, and it was a machine. We were just like, I think this is a little way out of our wheelhouse. Yeah, so we got a, a piece to put on the back of the rototiller now. Yes. Well, the tiller, it, we know how to manage with that. Mm. We've moved dirt with the tiller before. Right. We lowered our garden with the tiller. And yeah. you'll see that in future videos a ways off from us how we're going to do that and how we manage it with the tiller but 
it, it is a process, it's a job, and it's just one of those things where we kind of have to make do. But we do look for tools that are going to make things easier. If we have a project, like we know that it's just needed. Like bringing an excavator out here isn't <laughs> isn't going to work for us. No, no, just the trouble of getting it here and back and forth, and uh, the distance to go take something back or something like that is just almost more effort than it's worth. Yes. Um, so to our last point, the thing that we look at whenever we're looking at improvements for our homestead, our home and everything from the solar to putting in an outside laundry and shower area, possibly an outhouse area, we look for ways to not be 100% reliant on modern conveniences. Mm -hmm. So hundred years ago, I mean, plumbing was a thing, but. You still hear about outhouses in a lot of places and that are a lot of outdoor right. homesteads. Like, we see this all the time. You know, so, like, what we were thinking, you know, composting toilet, you know, that's like the modern day version, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know, but um, something to think about there, uh, for example. And then, you know, having the ability, um, we got an outdoor um, that we still got to put up from Lehman's, the outdoor um, washing machine, hand washing. Yep, the hand washing machine. Also, for like when Aaron's outside of poison ivy, he can have a place outside to yep. wash his hands. Yep. Like, this is vital to our homestead. This is an improvement. So, how do we take like what they used to do way back then, bring it in? Because we know what poison ivy does. So, just unfortunately, <laughs> thinking outside the box, looking at things, and just trying to avoid those conveniences. Like, even electricity, you know, how. How do we reduce our reliance on our electric company? That's get, getting more away from the electric usage, switching it over to more solar, solar for example. Uh, I, and the more and more we're reading about it, uh, the more and more it seems like we've got to keep doing more stuff, especially when they talk about bringing in new new ideas, per se, that they're going to pay, that'll that, save money. That'll save money, but they said it will come with, they would have to increase our rates. Yep. It's going to use less, we, we, will, we <laughs> won't have as much of a load, but we're going to have to increase your rates. It makes yeah. so much sense. Um, <laughs> so, I know your favorite thing about the old skills, but tell everybody your favorite thing about learning old skills, old ways. I say it puts you back, you know, of how things used to be done. So you learn those skills, learn those traditions, learn how things are done uh, from that perspective. And you're able to, you know, keep those traditions alive. Yes, I agree. It's just so. Important. Is that what you was going to say for me? Or you I was going to say the tools. That's your favorite thing. Well, yeah, it, it is. Um, I mean, you know, I won't. I, axes you know more axes <laughs> but uh you know those are you know it's something that uh, uh it, it definitely uh, allows you to keep those traditions alive you know of how things used to be done and make sure that people remember this is how you know this is how you used to have to do this and not only that if you can't get out and get gas you can brow fork your garden you can brow fork your garden you can till your garden you can dig your garden. I mean, you can do all that still. We've made sure we've got everything, for, even from like a prepping standpoint, to be able to make sure we can have a garden. Yep. That's important. It, it's a prepping thing, too. Like, they didn't yep. have these modern conveniences. Right. That's something we missed. It's a prepping. And, like, that mm. is probably the biggest thing to look at it for from a homesteader and preppers. Yep. It's prepping. Like, if you look at the way they used to do things, like, you, we want manual, not, like, when we look at a new item. Well, that's why you hear a lot of your preppers talk about, too, is they want physical copies of books. They want physical copies of books, always. 
Well, if we look at bringing something new into the homestead, what does it require? Does it require electricity? Mm -hmm. Does it need solar? Does it need batteries? Like all these are questions we ask. Like how do we take care of it? How yep. do we charge? Like I want things that are as least hands-on as possible, yep. as manual as possible. And that's really the way we've kind of shifted, especially with anything for the garden. We've really shifted away from getting anything that's not manual for the most part. I mean, that's, that's true. And a lot of it too, we've set up our gardens from a manual perspective, from raised beds to, you know, our garden section that we use to vertical trellising, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Made it as easy as we could so we can get more in there, more bulk. Yep. I know if my papa saw my vertical trellises, he would like, what are you doing? <laughs> you don't need, you don't grow it this way, Julia. You know that, right? Like I could just see that on his face. <laughs> <laughs> ah so what about you you said mine oh did i yep we're good oh <laughs> okay um so if there's anything you know that you want to leave comment wise you can leave them below on youtube or you can send it to the candy couple at yahoo.com make sure to go over and check our link tree which has links to all of our other content and make sure to go over and check us out on tiktok as well uh, we'd really appreciate, you know, uh, some um, subscribers over there. And as always, thank you for joining us on Royal Reliance with the Candy Couple, where we work hard, live simple, and enjoy life. Have a wonderful day.